Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with a man named Attila, drinking a glass of whiskey. He's a robber who routinely robs banks, and he's preparing to rob a little bank on the outskirts of town this time. A police officer is in his room. Soon, Attila enters the room. He is imprisoned and it's not for the first time. Laszlo, the inspector confronts and questions him. It turns out he has committed 26 robberies in the last six years. Laszlo asks him to tell about all the robberies. Attila starts with his childhood, he had a tough childhood. In flashback, his father is unable to care for and educate him, therefore, he is adopted by a family. However, this family is also unable to care for the mischievous Attila. As a result, he is placed in a special educational facility on one occasion. The location is designed as a punishment for a boy like him. After being sprayed with water, Attila is placed in a room with many youngsters, and receives a severe education. For him, this place felt like a jail. Some time later, Attila has now become a state mercenary, as a result of his education. Attila is taught how to shoot during his training. It is clear he is the only one who is skilled at shooting. Not only that, he has been assigned to work as a jail guard. While he is on duty, it is discovered that two inmates are surreptitiously attempting to escape. Attila apprehends them, but he lacks the courage to shoot the two men dead. Other officers however immediately shoot the two. Attila wonders late at night, why are people so cruel and merciless? He believes life is a punishment for all humans. With this thought, he covertly attempts to flee the army. Fortunately, God still had mercy on him, and he could eventually leave this place. He slips beneath the train car and disappears from the scene of the crime. When he arrives at the train station, he only has a belt, which he attaches to an iron in the carriage. But his efforts are not in vain, as he is able to flee to Budapest. When he arrives, he walks to the toilet and prepares to wash his dust-covered face. A bald man appears shortly after, carrying a briefcase. To keep himself safe, Attila snatches the man's clothes, and declares himself free and independent from this point onwards. On another occasion, he expresses a desire to pursue his childhood goal, of playing ice hockey. He joins an ice hockey team, where he is a goaltender. However, it turns out he will need a lot of work before he can make the first team. Boda, the coach is nevertheless gracious and eager to accept him on the bench. Not only that, but because Attila has nowhere to sleep, he is willing to work as a cleaner, in exchange for a place to stay. Fortunately, the coach also provides an apartment for him. On the other side, he must manage his time as an office boy, at the hockey team's practice facility, beginning with cleaning the ice rink, and then changing faulty lights. In between his new interests, he is quite fortunate, because his new hockey teammates are very open with him. He is invited to hang out with his hockey buddies. While chatting, Attila notices a girl, who steals his heart. Because he never met a girl since boyhood, he pursues her, and requests they get acquainted. Unfortunately, he does not have time to learn the name of this lovely lady. As a result, when the train leaves, he dashes to the next station. Again, he is fortunate in that he arrives at the station before the girl. Her name is later revealed to be Kata. Continuing his narrative, Attila goes to the immigration office, since he needs a permit as a citizen or an ID card to work. But this time, he is unlucky, because in order to transfer citizenship, he has to bring paperwork from his home country to be authenticated, which comes with some complications. As a result, he is instructed to return in two weeks, with the requisite letters and conditions. Of course, he cannot do it, because returning to his residence would be suicide for him. So we continue with Attila and Kata's love tale. They go to the movies one day, but Attila doesn't have any extra cash with him, not even enough to buy popcorn. As a result, he feels ashamed of Kata, who had to cover the shortfall. Moving on, Attila and his team are in the gym the next day. Because his citizenship documents were difficult, Attila seeks assistance from his friend Zero. Attila approaches Zero's uncle, who works at the immigration office, for assistance in obtaining his citizenship papers as soon as possible. Fortunately, Zero is willing to assist him. Attila approaches Zolti after finishing the gym, to borrow money to pay for his transfer documents, and meets Zero's uncle after receiving the loan money. Attila hands over money to the facilitator, along with a passport photo. However, it turns out that the facilitation funds are still insufficient. However, Attila is out of money. Fortunately, because of the generosity of Zero's uncle, the transfer of Attila's citizenship will be tried. After finishing his training, Attila comes home to learn that a ruler in Europe has died. Naturally, he is concerned, his citizenship transfer letter would take a long time to process now. After that, Attila's days become repetitive, since he is afraid of being deported, 
lacking an ID card. Then he contacts Zero's uncle once more. However, his call is never returned, and he is unable to locate a bright spot. As a result, he collects the courage to go to Zero's uncle's workplace. When they finally meet, Attila is particularly urged to leave. Zero's uncle had certainly taken care of it, but because the money was insufficient, the process would have to take a long time, and Attila needs it right away. Attila's love adventure on the other hand continues. He is introduced to Kata's parents this time. When confronted directly and asked about his future and work, Attila is unable to respond. While Kata already has a promising future, the meeting makes Attila uncomfortable, so he chooses to leave right away. Kata is disappointed to learn this. On the walk home, he realizes his future is still bleak. He goes to a post office and looks around, there doesn't appear to be a single guard present. And this is where his desire to steal manifests itself. He goes to a market to buy a wig, and a toy gun for concealment. Then at home, he disguises himself as a young CEO. Before heading to the post office to rob, Attila drinks a bottle of whiskey to unwind. His face is pale when he arrives, because it is his first time robbing. The tellers can't believe Attila is robbing them at first. However, he quickly locks up the tellers and steals the money. Then he manages to flee, with a large sum of money. He runs into a train tunnel, to avoid leaving any evidence. He also removes his shoes and clothing there. When he gets home, he hides the money in the oven. From there, Attila, who felt financially independent, goes out to have fun. He even pays off Zolti's debts. It doesn't end there, he also purchases a car. After months of absence, he even returns to visit Kata. He explains that he had been busy making money, in order to prove it to her parents. She appears to be overjoyed as a result. He is unexpectedly visited by his teammates, after returning home from hockey practice. At first, they assume Attila has looted the bank, but he explains the money he now has came from selling bear skins. However, the stolen funds drop with time. As a result, he begins to consider robbing somewhere else, of course a bigger one. The action then starts. This time, he rides a motorcycle in order to flee. There is however a security guard on duty. Attila is at first ignorant, but as he exits the post office, carrying the stolen money, and notices the security guard, he flees. But not long after he left, Attila is hit by a car. He restarts the engine quickly, and there is a chase between him and the security guard. Attila is still lucky at the time, managing to escape slipping into the river. As a result of the episode, Attila's acts grow even more heinous. He continues robbing banks, until he becomes very wealthy, yet he never forgets his whiskey, earning him the moniker, Whiskey Robber. He takes Kata on a vacation across the world. He is back in training with his hockey team one day. He is introduced to Boda's son, Geza, and he would play alongside Attila in the next match. In the next robbery, Attila manages to flee. However, this time the police had heavily secured the bank area, and even stopped all access roads, forcing Attila to go to the bank building's roof. After such a long wait, he falls asleep there. The next morning, he is still blessed with good fortune, and manages to flee. Becoming a well-known whiskey bandit, it is adapted into a film and novel. Moving on to Geza smoking in front of the training grounds, when he notices Attila approaching. Geza is a valuable teammate for Attila. They talk about the incident earlier in the day, while hanging around on the side of the road. Not only that, Attila begins to be open and honest with Geza, about his actions thus far. Not because he is tired, but because Attila is preparing an even greater robbery, and wants someone to assist him in carrying it out. Geza accepts, who has been initiated as his robbery accomplice, because the lower class's idol turned out to be his own friend. The two of them then commit a bank heist. Geza is instructed to monitor the exit, securing a guard, while Attila takes the money from the safe. Finally, he preserves a bottle of whiskey as his trademark. In short, the robbery goes off without a hitch. They celebrate their accomplishments in the evening. Another day, after hockey practice, Attila overhears Geza discussing a robbery. When he sees this, he promptly drags Geza out. Even though Geza was kidding, Attila issues a severe warning. The next day, Attila continues to live an unhappy life, since he is always forced to hide behind fear. Attila and Geza plan another bank robbery in Hungary. Following a poll, the robbery is immediately launched. Their activities are initially smooth. However, one of the bank's bodyguards has already locked the safe from the inside, so they won't be able to remove much money from it. When the staff at the front of the bank witnesses their robbery, their bad luck continues. When Geza and Attila emerge from there, the workers confront them, and a chase commences. Geza and Attila separate, 
and Attila is compelled to take a car that is nearby. The police officers swiftly follow Attila, who unhappily collides with a car. Fortunately, the car is still running at the moment, but the chase with the cops is not over. This time, Attila's life is in jeopardy. However, he manages to flee after the crash. When he is at home, wiping the fragments of glass that had clung to his back, Kata appears. Seeing him in such a state, she instantly falls silent and refuses to learn more. Back to Attila and Geza, they reunite and plan another robbery. But this time is different, Attila has even devised a backup plan. If one of them is apprehended, he must refrain from speaking to the authorities for three hours. They are planning to loot the Hungarian bank. Attila directs that Geza secure the door first, then confine the captives in a room, so Attila can retrieve the money from the safe. After succeeding in intending to depart right away, the sound of police sirens is heard. They had forgotten the door had previously been locked. Attila forces himself out of there, shooting the glass door. But the activity comes to a tragic end, Geza is apprehended by the police, while Attila manages to flee. Geza recalls promising not to talk to the cops for three hours. So when he is interviewed, he doesn't say anything to the cops, while Attila attempts to find a method to save Geza from the cops. Geza keeps waiting for Attila, but lets it slip, he inquires about the time. So Laszlo, who is torturing Geza, recognizes that he is expecting something. Laszlo then directs his men to relocate Geza to another room. The clock in the room had been sped up, so when Geza discovers that it is showing more than three hours, he promptly reveals who Attila actually is. Attila, who is standing at the border, is contacted by police, and transported to the immigration office. It doesn't take long for the other cops to arrive, and Attila's fate is sealed. Kata once pays a visit to Attila in prison. However, she has been having an affair with another guy, and the money that Attila has been saving for her has run out. Returning to Laszlo and Attila, Laszlo is stressed since he is dealing with Attila's case. Because of this, he spends less time with his family. Attila immediately returns to his cell. He's taken some cables from Laszlo's room, and abruptly rips out the cable, and attempts to flee from there. After successfully traveling through numerous rooms, Attila attempts to escape from the prison, passing through a window. But it doesn't work, since the police are aware of it. The whiskey bandit is proclaimed captured, and returned to his cell in the evening. He is released from jail after serving a 12-year sentence, and now makes a living as a merchant. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.